Before Mr. Barishnikov and I became homosexual lovers more than 20 years ago, I was familiar with his work, as was everyone. Like everyone else alive at that time, I was fully aware of him very, for a very long time before I met him. His career has been a, what's the word, um, stupefying array of successes. As a genius, gorgeous, gorgeous dancer, as a dance history curator, which surprised me, and an enthusiast, as a mentor, as a patron, as a producer, as an audience, and as a very good friend for many years, as I mentioned earlier. <laughs> his, his basic ideas about the arts and artists for which we founded the White Oak Dance Project, which was wonderful while it lasted, are, are never more alive than they are in Hell's Kitchen, unfortunately now called Clinton. <laughs> at his art center where he still does anything he possibly can do to support and promote and to develop art and human beings. He has devoted himself, like very few other people have, to better craftsmanship in dance, a lost interest, and performance. And I salute that uh, strongly, but I won't raise my hand. I'm holding on to my drink. We'll raise a drink in a minute. Here's to you, Mr. Darling, fabulous Misha Barishnikov. You have to have a drink right away or it doesn't count. For inspiring everything and everyone. We are better people because we've watched you We've worked with you, we've had our work come to life because of you, and from all of us, thank you so much. You're so darling and fabulous, and thank you, hooray. Misha, there's a pink bomb here for you. <laughs> We'd so love for you to come up and get it. <laughs> I didn't know I was supposed to hand it out. I thought it was just a cocktail. I thought, it... <laughs> Mr. Barishnikov, please come and claim your bomb and then get on the airplane immediately. <laughs> so pleased to be honoring Mary tonight. Where are you, Mary? Okay. <laughs> when I first met Mary Hamann 25 years ago, she was this ultra-hip surfer girl from California. She had this smoking body, and she was just the coolest baby you can imagine. Every time I used to call her on the phone, and those of you who know her, she's answered the phone, I said, it's Marilyn, she'd go, Hey, pal. <laughs> so you know that's her. Um, I, I love Mary's work from the moment I saw it, and it is still as fresh today as it ever was. Uh, people who know the language of painting know that the hardest thing to create is effortlessness. It's much easier to just add another layer, make another mark, pile on the color. Mary knows the magical moment that most artists have a hard time with, and that is the, the moment when you should stop. And she does it seamlessly. Mary is a wonderful friend. Whenever the ups and the downs of the art world get to me, I call Mary, and she always, she always reminds me of the Clash song, Rudy Can't Fail. And she means by that, rude girls can't fail. So, here's bravo, Mary Hallman. that we also are homosexual lovers. <laughs> Hello, good evening. I'm toasting Miss Elizabeth LeCompte, the director of the Wooster Group. Um, I studied performance art, which is a kind of difficult thing to study, uh, seeing as it's not really a discipline and it doesn't have that long of a history. So after about one year in the performance department, you're hanging out with people uh, setting chickens loose in a studio or bringing in a razor blade or playing with hammers or leaving you adrift uh, to try to find ways to be an artist. Um, the Wooster Group has become a 
place where I can learn with a master who has explored and created new languages. Oh my God, I'm getting nervous. Uh, God, it's getting too serious, hold on. <clears throat> so, uh, well, yeah, that's what I should say. How do you spell diva? L I Z. She's a diva in the morning. She's a diva in the evening. She's a diva when she wakes up, and she's a diva when she breaks up. Miss Elizabeth LeCompte. Diva, diva, diva. Uh, yeah, I just want to say that um, Casey and I are getting married. <laughs>